Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are doing Advent of Code Day 9. And let's jump over to the explanation right away. With your neighbor happily enjoying their video game, you can turn your attention to the open data port on a little screen in the seat beyond, uh, in front of you. Though the port is a non-standard, you manage to connect to, the, uh, to your computer through a clever use of several pap paper clips upon connection. The port outputs a series of numbers, your puzzle input. The data appears to be encrypted with the exchange masking addition system, which is an XMAS, uh, which conveniently for you is an old cipher uh, with an important weakness. X must start by transmitting a preamble of 25 numbers. After that, each number you receive should be the sum of any two of those 24 immediately previous numbers. The two numbers will be different values and, are, uh, and there might be more than one such pair. For example, suppose your preamble consists of the numbers 1 to 25 in a random order uh, to be valid the next number must be the sum of those two and they explain it and suppose the 26th is the number of and explain that and uh, so what i want us to test is to see that the previous numbers uh, they need to be different in the pairs the pairs must be different, the two numbers in the pairs must be different. Um, so that's important uh, distinction. Uh, it's not the different uh, position in the array, it's different numbers. So uh, that makes the thing a little bit easier, I believe. Um, so here we have a large example with consider both numbers and so this example should only have five number preamble and the other one should have 25. So uh, in the first here we should find 127 as the value that doesn't really match the five uh, before it. So let's jump over to code here. I've already prepared with the main function and the reader and so on. Um, so let's create a little bit of a buffer <laughs> for all these numbers um, because we want to loop over a lot of numbers. Uh, so I think that could be a good way to go. Let's see in the real example here, do we have any huge numbers? We do have huge numbers. So I think a long array could be good. Um, buffer, and new long array. I think we need to have a list as well of longs. Perhaps that's the only thing that we need uh, because we want to keep a lot of values. Should we keep 25 of the values and then just skip the rest once and uh, read the file during our work? Or should we save all the values in a long list? That's the conundrum and I think we have numbers a list here new uh, array list like that and for each line we take our numbers we add a line so this will be long parse long line so now we have our all our numbers like that shall we move over yeah I think so so we take this buffer up here we take these 
numbers to array. Mm, size like that. Mm. Can't cast it. That's a bit sad. <laughs> or we can actually do this as um, uh, like this and say that these are strings and not parse the lines. We can do that in the second operation here. Uh, equal to parse long and the string. This is not really important, but we get a little bit of a more efficient way to work with this. So now we need to have a position where we are at the moment with our working unit. And that position should be, we make a lot of for loops now, so be ready. So the position starts at 25, because that's after these 25 first numbers. And with our test example, it's just five. And after that, so I think we also need to have a final int uh, preamble. In this case, it's five. So preamble, five. Uh, and then we run until pus is less than the uh, buffer length and position plus plus. So that's our first thing. Then we need to have one for loop for uh, val one pus, the value one position, and that should be position um, and position minus uh, preamble and then it should be so now we have started at the first position again so we are moving backwards um, and it sh should go on until it is at position and then we increment that one and I think we need to have an inner loop again there of this second values position and if the buffer value one position is equal to the buffer value to position, we should continue. That's not allowed. Okay. And uh, if, if these two positions summed up, mm, is equal to the current position, then we should break out of these loops. So we need to have an um, test loop and we need to break out of the test loop like that. And here we need to check if, okay, so we we need to have a boolean up here uh, found false or 
pound two. <laughs> and like that. And if we break here, then found should be false. Which means that if we go through this and don't find Can we give a better name for this one? Um, uh, all values uh, multiply or all values sum up to there. There is a value that sums up to um, uh, our current value. So that, that's what we want to accomplish here. And here we say false, but if we find a value, that's true. But if we have come down here and this is still falsy, then we will take the current position, uh, the buffers uh, position and print that out and break. So uh, let's see if we run this one and see what happens if we have made this very much more complicated than it needs to be. Out of bounds for the index of 20. How can this get out of bounds? We have the position and that's less than the buffer length and we do a minus on that position and then go until we reach that position is it really feasible that it can go over <laughs> oh of course that's what we want to check mm. No, it wasn't feasible. So 127. <laughs> we, we got the right answer. Uh, so this is a headache. Uh, but I hope you understand that this is the preamble that we defined before. So I used the right word there. And we have one pos position in our buffer and it starts at the preamble. So that means that that is the, in this case, the sixth value we have five values as a preamble and we start at the sixth value. And then we will move from that value until we end, end the buffer. And in this value position here of the first one, we will check from the position and five values back until the position. And we will do that with two, two for loops. So they will find all the values uh, two times over but we will skip all those that are equal so that they are the same value, not the same position, the same value. And if they are different and they sum up to our position, then we have found a value <laughs> and we will set that to true. And when we have been able to run these two loops without finding a value, then that's the value that we're looking for. And it, that's what we're printing out down here. Uh, so it's not the nicest code that I've written, but it should work. So let's look at the larger example here. And we got 16 and that's not the right one because we have a little to little preamble. So let's change that up to 25. And then we get this huge value <laughs> here. And that should be one of the values here. It is. And it looks reasonable that in none of the 25 before it could be. So let's see if that's the right value. 
Let's try it out. Yes! You get a gold star. I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. Yes. So let's look at the second one here. The final step in breaking the XMath uh, encryption relies on the invalid number you just found. You must find a continuous set of at least two numbers in the list which sums up to the... Uh, an you must find uh, a continuous set of at least two numbers in the list of the uh, which sums up to the invalid val number from step one. Again, consider the above example. So, in this list, adding up all the numbers from 15 to 40 produces the invalid number. Uh, 127 for uh, of course the continuous set of numbers in the, the actual list might be much longer to find the encryption weakness add together the smallest and the largest number of this continuous range in this example these are 15 and uh, 47 which produces 62 Okay, and these numbers up here are not uh, not close to the five that we had in range. Uh, so we need to find a range of numbers which sums up to uh, that value that we had there and we can start from the beginning okay hmm. Hmm. this is an interesting one so we the way we can do this is have a loop that we increment uh, for each time we find a range that is larger than the value but not equal to um, and then we just sum up values from the start and then add to that incrementer um, until we get the right one that is the right way to go i think so the value that we want to work with is this value and I don't think this up here will do anything to uh, help us. Um, <laughs> so we want a starting position. Mm, so we pretty much can use these down here. Mm, and the value we are looking for is that value so we can have a final int value to find like that put that in here so it's not a magic number and if we find that value uh, we will uh, exit here with zero so that's the first one and we also want to um, uh, output the value one position and uh, can actually do like this so that we have the value one position and the value to position and should they be timed uh, we should add them together so we will add those two together those two positions so 
the first value will be a value from zero to the buffer uh, length like that and here we will have a value from value one position to the buffer length and we can have the accumulator up here accumulator equals zero uh, and if here we can take the accumulator and add to the accumulator the second value here and what we pretty much want to see is if the accumulator is the value we want to find so what we do here is we have a first value position it, that's the lower part of the range and then we go to the upper part of the range, which is value position two. And when we start at the lower range, we set the accumulator to zero. And when we actually reach it down here, the value position of uh, the upper bound will be in value two position. And then we will add the lower bound and upper bound together and get the value that we are searching for. So let's see if that is correct, if I have thought this true. So that should be our value, if this is correct. So let's try that out. Not the right answer, it's too low. Okay. Mm. So let's go back here and see. Uh, I really thought that this should work. So what have I done wrong here? Mm -mm -mm. So let's here, when we print this out, let's uh, print out the value positions as well. Mm. So that's the range that we think should be the right range up to 45. So these are the values that we think should be in there. I didn't actually have if the accumulator is larger than the value to find, then break. Uh, don't really think that that should do anything here, but it, has, it, it will make it a bit faster. <laughs> so that was one thing that I was thinking about here. Um, so why, why, oh why? We actually find a range and we add the range together. Um, Find a add together the smallest and the largest numbers in the continuous range in this example. So I tested to run this without um, any stop and I get the that range and the uh, um, yeah, the only value more is the actual value that we are on uh, by itself which is not the right one. So this is really strange that we have only one answer and it's not the correct one. So find the recryptant we add together the smallest and the largest number in this continuous range in this example 15 and 47 producing 62. Oh, the largest number in the range. That's what I'm doing wrong. 
I see. So the smallest and the largest number in that range. So now we have found the range. And uh, we will do uh, for uh, uh, int smallest equal to integer max value int largest equal to zero. And then we will have a for loop here. Ding, 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 ding. Whoop. Which goes from uh, I, uh, the first one, to uh, where I is smaller then that plus one, i plus plus, if um, smallest is larger than the buffer i value, then smallest will be equal to that buffer i value. And if the largest is smaller than the uh, largest will be that buffer value. Mm, what do I do wrong here? It's a long, 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 long. Let's do a long value instead. And then we will have the long max value instead. So now we will find the largest and the smallest number in this range here. And if we use i somewhere else, we might do that j. Change this accumulator here, so it's a J instead. So now we have the largest and the smallest number. Let's take those two and add those together. Let's see if we get another value here. Mm -mm -mm. We get a little bit of a larger number here. So that must be the right one then. Let's put that in. Yes, you get a gold star, I get a gold star. Everybody gets a gold star. We solved another one. So that was day nine. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions, suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. Or if you have your own solution that you want to share with the community, leave that there as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.